In this video, I want to share with you one thing you should avoid when you venture into the social media world. Whatever the reason, some people want to build a following, whether it's for a business or for their own personal brand. And they want to do this on social media, whether it's Instagram or YouTube or Facebook or something else. The one thing you should look to avoid is what I like to call vanity metrics. Now, there's a lot of things you should avoid, but this is a big one, and it's probably one of the biggest ones. What is a vanity metric? These are things that are easily gameable. These are things that are easily gameable or manipulated or really prove or are really just metrics that may look good to an outsider who doesn't know any better, but really has no true tangible value because it doesn't translate into sales, it doesn't translate into actual fans, it doesn't translate into anything really. And you know, for some people they don't care about sales, but they and and it's not all about money, but a sales is one of those metrics that's actually tangible to use as an example. It it doesn't translate it and outside of sales, it doesn't translate into actual real engaged fans or followers who actually come back and listen to your words or at least engage consistently. So what are the biggest vanity metrics? Well, there's a lot of them and you can find them pretty easily. They're common sense after you know what it what they are. But the biggest ones are followers and on YouTube they're called subscribers. The second is comments and then the third is likes. So most social media platforms have these. And why are these vanity metrics? It's actually a vanity metric because they are all very easily manipulated and gameable by programs, bots, and other stuff. And ultimately, what, did that, what does that lead to? It leads to situations where you may have all these likes, all these comments, but they're very clearly fake. Or maybe they're not even clearly fake. Let's just even assume on the extreme end that some program made it look like they're like really genuinely real, even though they're not. Well, uh, well for the most part, that's not going to bring you anything in the long run. As soon as you turn off that bot, that's going to stop coming and you're still left with nothing. There's a lot of people on YouTube who have like half a million followers, like 500,000 subscribers, and they get a thousand or maybe like 10 views per video. And that's not really a following of 500,000, is it? So I think what people are starting to realize and understand is, uh, you know, initially, maybe 10 years ago, people thought, oh, with the social media world and the internet, you are now the voice to tens of millions or hundreds of millions. Turns out it's a lot more difficult to keep that attention even if someone hits that follow or subscribe button because all the other accounts on the subscription feed and all the other noise out there. And it's very difficult and it's one of the reasons why uh, I was just very uh, skeptical about Google+. Plus. You know, there's a lot of experts and they told me Google+, Plus is the biggest thing ever back when Google+, Plus a few years ago, was uh, the hot thing apparently and I was just very skeptical about it because I would go to these uh, huge Google Plus top followed pages with like 5 million followers and I would look at the things that they post and they would get 3 or 5, sometimes less, 1 upvote or like. They're not called likes on Google Plus, they're called pluses and the point was I was like they're not getting they're releasing content but they they sure don't have truly 5 million followers they have maybe uh, a couple that follow them relevantly and you know I I would bring this up and they'd just be like oh they'd have all these excuses oh it's you know it's the, I'm posting so much content that's why or you know this or that and uh, that's a scary thing so you want to measure that like maybe they're not getting likes. How how many people are actually clicking on the stuff you post? How many people are, are actually reading it? How many people are doing something about it? And so you want to avoid vanity metrics. And turns out, uh, I got this from Tim Schmoyer. He is a 
uh, YouTube expert and he knows all the, uh, the behind the scene things with how YouTube functions and there's a lot of common beliefs or myths out there about how likes and comments and replying to comments lead to better engagement. Now they're always tweaking their algorithm but apparently all those things really don't matter because they're too easily gamed. Now they may have changed it back a bit. There might be some influence to likes or you know keyword relevancy in comments but maybe that's not the case at all. Quite frankly it could it possibly couldn't be, it possibly could be, I don't know. The point is just be sure not to be too focused on the things that don't matter. You know, there are accounts out there who have this huge following and they go dead or the the following just dies for whatever reason. So it's not just about building that, it's about keeping that and staying relevant and fresh. And there I mean YouTube is such a vast platform on its own and I've seen a lot of channels on here who have stood the test of time by staying relevant. Ellen DeGeneres, Smosh, PewDiePie and then others who have died out or gone dry and uh, you know it's for a variety of reasons. Maybe it was just the thing that they were doing was a trend and people stopped liking it. Sometimes it's because it was a one shot one pony type thing, a one trick pony type deal where every week they would do the same thing. Try and throw an iPhone off the roof and see if it would crash in a unique way. Or they would blend a random thing uh, like Blendtec did. Uh, or you know they would crush something with a hydraulic press. And some of these things would work for a while. Uh, others, uh, they, they just got old. You know, there's uh, Beaner Kiki and he was this uh, lip sync guy and he was huge on YouTube. And if, if you went to his channel now, uh, it's kind of unfortunate how mean the internet is. But, uh, you know, it's kind of dead now. And he used to get millions of views. And more so than that, if you look at the comments, it's just atrocious. And I think, you know, I don't know why he won't turn off the comments. Maybe he thinks it gets him more uh, rankings. But it's it's just a, a tragic thing, you know. He gets all sorts of abuse in the comments and mostly dislikes. So there's, there's this whole thing about, like, keeping up with the trends as well. And uh, it's crazy. I mean... Uh, there's also all sorts of other channels like uh, Ray William Johnson or uh, Fred and those were huge hits back in the day like they went from zero to millions of subscribers probably the fastest ever on on YouTube to number one most subscribed in the history of YouTube and then you know they lost the passion for it and uh, some of them have just disappeared and then there's others others out there uh, there's this uh, guy his name's uh, John Chow or something like that there's this guy his name's uh... there are other channels out there too there, there are other channels out there too like Peter Chow channel and Athene Wins channel and those have been trying to uh, and those were really big back in the day and they got you know hundreds of thousands of views and since then they've pretty much whittled down to like a couple thousand views and one of the reasons I feel like is that they've just for whatever reason been unable to keep up with the changes and relevancy and what the YouTube audience wants for whatever reason or it's just not relevant anymore and the, the views have stopped. So that's a scary thing as well. Uh, social media is not something where, you know, once you hit it big, you can just, you know, sit back. It's almost this thing where you're constantly trying to stay relevant and the views, the, you know, people who see your stuff is not always guaranteed. It varies. And some people have been able to keep that going. And I think that the ones who will stay relevant are the ones who who keep that sharpness. And some of them you know, do so very well. So hopefully you learned something from this video. Thanks for watching. Of course, you can search up the videos I talked about, the channels I mentioned, uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about these examples. And thanks for watching. See you later.